Europe is a continent that, after the World War II, it has been built up to be a continent of freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of speech and democracy. And now, during the past two few years, we have seen more and more terrorist attacks in Europe. And even in Finland, we had an attack in Turku. So the question is, why? Why are we getting these attacks? Because you open the borders for people, some of them, they don't agree with all of these values you talked about that made up Europe, democracy, freedom, uh, freedom of speech. Uh, there are many reasons for this violence we are seeing now, especially among young refugees. Most of the time, they don't come to Europe to kill you. That's not the purpose why they are coming. They are coming to have a better life, but then very soon figure out that it's not the paradise they were dreaming of. Uh, the smugglers were taking a lot of money from them and giving them uh, the hope that they will get a house here and a good salary and they can pay back their debts. Most of the cases, their, their families were making debts to send them to Europe, hoping that this money will come back, but this doesn't happen. Then they come here, there are many barriers, the language, the food, the temperature, um, and uh, despair. Sometimes when their application for asylum is uh, not accepted, this is a shock for them. Until now, this is all normal. Everyone who immigrates, no matter from which religion, can face all of this. Then comes the Islamic ideology, which is giving those people a shortcut to paradise to cover this despair, to solve this problem, this escape safe path for them. That's the new thing. And that's why many people, uh, they make out of a, a problem a virtue. They make out of despair courage, which has nothing to do with courage. The ideology which looks at Europe as decadent, not moral, uh, the ideology that consider the death of unbelievers uh, is a, a service to God, and a young Muslim just listen to that and thinks, if I just make a normal crime, I will end up as a loser in the prison. But if I kill unbelievers, I go to paradise and I get 72 virgins in paradise. So that makes this option for him very attractive. But why are, what's the purpose? What's the goal to do these attacks? You said that, okay, it's a way for, for those people who do the attack, a way for them to paradise. But, but is there a bigger cause behind those attacks? There is a schizophrenia, a schizophrenia in the whole thing. Like on the one hand, they look at Europe as a dream where they can get a good job, where girls look nice mm -hmm. and uh, where they can have a better future, better education. But when they come here, they are faced with their own minority complex. Mm -hmm. And they're also faced with the ideology which is telling them, your Christian neighbor is not really so nice. He's, he doesn't believe in God. So he's a criminal because he doesn't believe in your God or in your prophet. Therefore, he deserves to die. That's the ideology. So Europe is kind of a mirror for us in the Islamic world. It shows us how underdeveloped we are. But it shows us how the values that we hate can make a better society. So we don't know exactly how to approach this. Should we take these values and try to do like them? Then we give up our identity. That's what they think. So when they come here, they get into this moral conflict. Uh, to be successful, you need to be open and free. But to be open and free, you commit sin from their point of view. And therefore, they reach a limit of their capacity and then they start to explode. So, but we see more and more of these attacks. What's the bigger purpose? What's the bigger picture of these attacks? You have the poor young Muslims who come here just to have a better life. And you have the jihadists who are also located in Europe in the meanwhile. And they start to recruit these young people and for these terror attacks because they think if you scare the Europeans, then they can, you can take over their countries uh, centimeter wise, like step by step. So you are going to be afraid. So next time when I say I'm going to build a mosque here, you are not going to protest. Next time when I say like in school, uh, my girl is not allowed to go to swim um, lesson, then you will agree. Then the next sentence like we need Sharia law in the law system, then you agree. So the, 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 the Islamization in stages. So that's what they wish. And of course, the final dream of the Islamist is to take over not only Europe, but the entire world. It's a holy promise, which is written in the Quran.
wow, that sounds actually very scary if, if I listen to that, what you say as a European and, and, a, and a resident of a free country. It is already scary now. I remember when I came to Europe like 22 years ago, I have, I have not seen one single policeman in the street. I have not seen a, a weapon. I have not seen military in the street. Now, uh, going through Paris or Brussels on, or Berlin, you find uh, police heavy armed. You find people scared. We start to change our lifestyle. We start to tell our girls not to wear short clothes, not to provoke the feeling of a Muslim either to be raped or to be blown away. So this is the, the two options. And this is really sad. And that's why we opened the border and we didn't say on the gates mm -hmm. how the rules here are. We thought in the name of freedom, what you have been talking about in the name of um, self-determination, we let them do what they think is right. But this is a big mistake. You should have told them from the beginning, here are the rules. Mm -hmm. If you don't Abide or the, abide to them. You go back home or wherever you come from, and uh, you should have uh, not opened the gate for everyone. I'm sorry to say, what does a Moroccan or a Tunisian have to do here as an asylum seeker? There are no wars in Morocco. There are no um, uh, hunger in Morocco. People are li still living. Yes, some don't have job, but this is the same in. Half of the countries of the world, we cannot open the gates for everyone just to have a better life. So the politicians should have acted from the beginning. Not to open the border is the one thing. And for those who come in, to tell them the rules. These are the clear rules. And you are not rude to say that. You are even helping them to lead a better life, to have a structure so that they can lead to. But leaving them and then... Anger. It's all about anger. They might be angry for many reasons. Angry from their childhood. Angry for violence that they had in their life. Angry that they have been discriminated in their own country and couldn't get a job. Angry that their parents are putting them under pressure to send money but they don't have. Angry that they might have loved a girl but they didn't marry. But all of these reasons, they don't face it and say, these are the real reasons for my anger. No, they put a virtue over it. Then they say, the reason is that God wants me to fight and I don't. The reason is the infidel West. The reason is the war in Syria. The reason is, the reason is my Christian neighbor. And by doing so, they put a virtue over that. So it's not a crime for them. It's a holy mission. And that makes the difference between what we are seeing now and between all other crimes. And that makes it also very dangerous. There are rich and... and uh rich uh, Arabic Muslim country where the society is already based on Islam. So why are these Moroccans, Tunisians, why are they coming to infidel Europe instead of going to those rich countries where they could have a life in, uh, in Islamic state? Well, two reasons. The first reason is the Islamic countries, the rich Islamic countries don't open their borders. We have mm. three million tents in Mecca, which are used only for two weeks during the pilgrimage. And they're empty, the rest of They are air-conditioned tents. They can have many millions of refugees. They don't allow refugees in. Therefore, they come to Europe. And of course, they, they come to Europe because in Europe they know they get a social help, they get a house, they get a place to stay, and they can do whatever they want, and they are not going to be sent back home. In Saudi Arabia, just the first mistake, and they will be sent back home. Yeah. So maybe we are too naive. <laughs> yes. That's yes. it. You said that the ultimate goal is to, to do, to make Europe an uh, Islamic continent. And we see in different European countries, the, the, the Muslims have a different level of, uh, of uh, freedoms uh, within Islam. So, is the game over? <laughs> Can we do anything to stop that, uh, that progress in Europe? We, are, we have reached now the point that we have to do not only something but a lot mm. to stop this catastrophe. But my impression is that the European politicians are thinking it's just a question of time. Mm. Give them time and everything will be over. Mm. That's very dangerous. We have to act now. We have to do a lot. We have to close the borders. We have to teach those people who come to behave. And we have to make the laws stricter. We have to send refugees back home if they are not refugees. Mm, yeah. So, and uh, we cannot just in the name of uh, freedom allow the enemies of freedom to build up their infrastructure mm -hmm. here and recruit people f to destroy our freedom. Yeah. Yeah. 
those young refugees who come to Europe and then decide to do these terror attacks, who tells them to do so? And where do they get the instruction to do so? Well, you have different groups. You have a group which are in contact, of course, with terror organizations like Al-Qaeda or IS, who are giving them plans and uh, are training them to do that. And then we have another group, which is the IKEA system, do-it-yourself jihadis. It means they just hear a story that in Barcelona or in Turku, somebody was killing people with a car or with a knife, and he himself is in troubles. Mm -hmm. He himself is in despair and is searching for a solution. So he just goes and chooses the fastest way. Yeah. So in the past, it was quite tough. You have to go and through Turkey and go to Syria and fight there. Now it's why it's 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 becoming so easy. Rent a car and uh, yeah. just uh, plow into pedestrians, or just buy a knife in the supermarket and kill the people inside the supermarket. That's what happened in Hamburg and in many other places too. So some of them are uh, just like uh, with a remote control from the uh, terror organization are moved, and some of them are just decide by themselves because this option is there. If you have all the problems of the world, you don't face them like a real man. No, it's much easier just to kill someone and then you, be, you will be killed yourself and then you will have lunch with the prophet in paradise. That's what the leaders of the jihad movements are telling them. You will have lunch with the prophet in paradise as if Muhammad is sitting in McDonald's and just everyone is coming. <laughs> <laughs> wow. he, 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 but recently, it seems that he had many lunches at the same day. Yeah. This is very sad. Unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you so much, Hamid, for your time and for being in this program. Thank you. Kuulimme äsken melko suoraa puhetta, mutta näistä haasteista huolimatta avaimedia tekee työtä arabiankielisen muslimin maailman keskellä muun muassa al hayat satelliittikanavan kautta. Kanavan ohjelmiston sisältö on sen kaltaista, joka pyrkii avaamaan muslimien silmät näkemään todellisen islamin kasvot. Myös ohjelmasta saadun palautteiden joukossa on niitä, jotka ovat olleet valmiita terroritekoihin, mutta ohjelmien sisältö on saanut heidät muuttamaan mielensä. Ohjelman teko on siis erittäin raskasta ja haastavaa, jopa hengenvaarallista, joten muistathan ohjelman tekijöitä rukouksissasi. Tässä oli ohjelmamme tällä kertaa. Kiitos seurastasi ja hei hei!